Well, let's look at a wire just for a second. Let me just look at sort of two strips of the wire. We'll look at a little strip here, kind of a ring, and another strip here, another ring. And let's say the surface charge is changing. So we have a lot of positive charge on this ring. Okay. And let's say a little bit of positive charge on this ring. Well, if I were looking at a point halfway in between both of them, and I wanted to draw the electric field due to the, uh, the ring on the left side, that electric field would be pointing in what direction? Pointing that way, right? Pointing away from that positive charge. So E due to the left. The field due to the electric, or uh, excuse me, the electric field due to the charge ring on this side would be pointing in what direction? Opposite, right? But what, how about its magnitude? How would its magnitude compare? Be smaller, right? So we end up with electric field due to the right end pointing that way. But overall, because of the difference in charge, because the charges are not equal, and so the fields don't cancel out, you end up with a net electric field pointing in this direction. Okay, so we're just looking here at the surface charge gradient, not at the, uh, the battery, but we can make a sort of a plausibility argument of how this change in the surface charge spread out over the wire can lead to a net electric field. And just to show that in more detail, we have a program here which is just going to go through and do the brute force calculations using the superposition principle of electric fields at various locations, modeling a wire as just a series of rings of charge. Okay, so on this end where it's more red, the reddish color indicates positive charge, the bluish color indicates a negative charge. And so we're going from lots of positive, and then where it's neutral color, it's kind of zero charge and then it goes more blue, and that's negative charge, okay? So these are just modeling as a series of point charges. I'm going to remove the point charges just to make it easier to see. And then we do the calculations. The computer is just doing the superposition principle for each of those locations inside. And so outside we get some net electric field pointing away from the surface charge, but inside you see that the electric field points along the direction of the wire, and it's uniform. For a, a uniform thickness and a uniform uh, material, the electric field is constant. It doesn't matter whether we're in the interior or near the edge. The field is mostly uniform, cent or essentially uniform, inside the wire. Okay? And so this is just showing how we have a surface charge gradient leading to a net electric field inside the wire which can drive the current. And the bigger the gradient, the big, generally speaking, the bigger the electric field. Okay. Um, let's, for example, take a look at a situation. Okay. So we j we basically just talked about this. But if the if you have if you had a uniform charge, if all the all the rings were uniformly charged, the net electric field would be zero. But if you have this or this gradient of charge where it's more positive on one end, more negative on the other, you're going to get a net electric field pointing in what direction? Seven, right? It's going to be pointing in direction seven. Okay. Similar sort of situation here. I want to look at a specific circuit. Let's just do a review, quick review of what we did last time. Here is a circuit where we have a thick wire and another thick wire connected to each other by a thin wire, and it's all the same material. And just review of what we talked about last time, what do we know about the current in the thick wire versus the current in the thin wire, the electron current? All right, well, we need, maybe some of us need a little bit of review on this, but the current, if we're in the steady state, what do we know about the current in and the current out of a node? They've got to be... Equal. They've got to be equal. Okay, so you have the same number of electrons flowing into the thin wire 
uh, gets it going this way, into the thin wire per second as you have them flowing out of the thick wire per second. The currents have to be equal. But what's different? What would have to be different if the two currents are equal but the thicknesses are different? What's different? Uh, drift speed would be different? Yes, because I1 is equal to I2. So NA1 V1 is equal to NA2 V2. Drift speeds would be different. And also, therefore, okay, cross-sectional areas are different. One more thing, V equals UE, if the drift speeds are different, then electric fields are different. Okay, if you have, you're going to have a bigger drift speed in the thinner wire, right, than you have in the thicker wire. Bigger electric field. So what's that tell you about the surface charge gradient? Where is it, where is there a bigger change in surface charge per unit length? Uh, we're on the thick wire. The thick wire has a smaller field, right? So you should have it on the thin wire, right? And so I would draw something like this. I'd have a big change in the surface charge density across the thin wire, and then across the thick wire, maybe not so much, okay? So again, drawing these schematic diagrams just to show a general sense of how much charge you have at each point you want to show that there's a bigger charge change across places where you have a larger electric field. That's the key idea, okay? All right, next time we will do some more complex applications of circuits.